Well, happy sunshine family. Lunacy's back. We're picking up on the grand jury transcript. We finished off at the end of page 49 before I got a knock on my front door last time. So we're gonna pick it up here. As you remember what was going on, Parker Still is testifying or I should say Cynthia Davidson is testifying under the guise of asking questions and Parker Still has just been saying a lot of yes ma'ams. Uh, the jurors were asking some very important questions and they pretty much got shut down by the tag team of Parker Still and Cynthia Davidson. And we're pretty much getting to the end of this tag team before we're gonna take a break and this break was to pull out the records that should have been introduced in, <laughs> with the testimony a lot earlier. So Mrs. Davidson begins on line 22, and let's take a five minute break for him to look at those records. Yeah, I'm happy to pull those. And then Miss Davidson, did y'all want to take a short break or do you just want us to step out? And then a juror says, I've got one question. In other words, he opened up these CDs with ghost funds, and then he got real funds. And based on memory, there was about $40,000 that they didn't recover. Is that right? And Miss Davidson's answering. No, there was about, I think it's closer to the amount of the five, it's more than $500,000. And then a juror says, oh, yeah, but I mean... And Miss Davidson cuts the juror off because all of the money that went to Whitney Bank for the motor home, home is gone, question mark. Because all of the money that went to Whitney Bank for the motor home is gone, question mark. Juror says, right, right. Miss Davidson, because that was a, you know, a bona fide purchaser. Because that was, you know, a bona fide purchaser. What a strange thing to say. Because that. Is she talking about Whitney Bank? Is she talking about the money? Because all of the money that went to Whitney Bank for a motor home is gone, question mark. Because that was, you know, a bona fide purchaser. I mean, bona fide, that means on the up and up, valid. Purchaser, somebody who buys something. And then we got the witness, I guess this is Parker. I think it will be a big benefit to show this, this full transaction sheet that's been provided to me by USAA for the benefit. You can see, it's just easy to see the money coming in and how it went right out. I think it would be a benefit to answer your question, sir, and anybody else's. Just give me one second. And Miss Davidson chimes in. So they have lost over $500,000. If you look at the forfeiture allegations, the thing that, this is where we get the amount that we're seeking in money judgment. It's $553,749.99 is the total loss to, now I think that they may be able to, he paid USAA as I understand it. And tell me if this is what you understand, Special Agent Still. And then a question by Mr. by Miss Davidson. So I I'm really I'm really blown away by how the court reporter is got Miss Davidson here. She's talking. And then we're just going to a question. And then in parentheses by Miss Davidson. 
Why didn't they leave this whole part out? This parenthetical and this Q here, I don't know. He paid some of his other debts to USAA with some of the money. So he, so USAA would, I think, their, they would say their total loss is right in the amount of $510,000. Is that what you understand? Again, convoluted testimony from Cynthia Davidson. Guys, just a question. Parker just says, right. We were talking about that just earlier today, question mark. Yes, ma'am. What, what does this have to do with anything? Was the jury present earlier when they were talking about that? And then a juror's speaking up here. He was probably trying to raise his credit score. This is complete speculation. But yet... It favors Miss Davidson, so he says. So she says, "Yeah, he paid off his USAA credit card and things of this nature." And then a question from Miss Davidson, but what he, what he got from his CD scheme is five hundred fifty-three thousand seven hundred forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Is that your understanding, Special Agent? Still question mark. Yes, ma'am. And so this is what he was able to take before they reversed all the transactions, question mark. Right. And some of that, like you said, you know, he used and they recouped some through, able to reach out and grab it within their own institution. And something, and it also accounts for his, the... We're not giving him the benefit of that, that fee that the bank charged for the 30 day. We're not giving, essentially they paid themselves with stolen money, so we're charging that back to him. Cynthia says, yeah. So when he paid on one of his credit cards, well, now, well they now found that payment not to be valid. So on that credit card, he still owes money. And then we're going to a question here. So if they were here to testify, they would say their total losses are roughly $510,000. Is that what you understand? Question mark. Yes, ma'am. Why are they not there to testify? This is, this is a garbage question. So if they were here to testify, they would say insert your propaganda. They've never named who it was would come in from USAA. Is, is they, meaning a USAA representative? I'm guessing that's what it is by the flow, but, but this entire question is garbage, and then to have it just be answered, oh yes ma'am, that's what they'd say. No, no, you bring them in. You have them say it. You provide a, a signed statement under the penalty of perjury with the complaint that, hey, this named person, they already have testified. They've put their signature on this document. The total losses are exactly whatever the figure is. But they're using the losses are roughly this. And they're not here, but if they were here, Par Special Agent Parker still, what would they say? And she's not even she's not even going that far. She's just saying, wouldn't they say this? This is all garbage, guys. And then Parker still just says, yes, ma'am. So we'll take a brief and be right back. I guess a brief break. In parentheses, whereupon the witness exited the grand jury room at approximately 3.51 p.m. and re-entered the grand jury room at approximately 3.56 p.m. So here we've got the four person. So, Mr. Still, you're still under oath, question <laughs> mark? Yes, ma'am. Question by Ms. Davidson. So just go through, what are these? 
These are bank records from USAA Federal Savings Bank. Let's look at this. This account number 3062. Let's go through this. Actually, I need, let me, I just like to go, kind of go old school on this. I just like to kind of go old school on this. Such weird testimony, guys. Let's look back a little bit before we even get here. Let's go, let's look back at what in this, in this account. So these are the dates. 7-3, you're looking at 6-30. You're seeing the following balances in this account. Do you want me to make it go out? Yes, ma'am. I wonder if they're talking about uh, the output on a screen. So you're seeing, so these are, this is before the scheme, right? Question mark. So you're seeing the balances in there. Question by Miss Davidson. And this is at count number three. Ending in 3062. <laughs> Is, is she refer? I, listen to the phonetics here, guys. And this is at count number three, ending in 3062. Does she mean account? A C C O U N T, account number three, ending in 3062? Or is she referring to account of one of the charges that's on the charging document? I'm not sure. Count number three on the charging document, I don't think there's a count number three ending in 3062. I think this means a count. And yet, this is a pretty, that's a pretty significant error if it's supposed to be a count. I don't know why the court reporter decoded the phonetics that way. It makes me wonder if there's speech recognition going on by a, a, a machine. So his, his answer, right, this is, yes, 3062. Show them again where, at the top, and then Parker still says 3062 and in parentheses indicating, probably pointing at, a, at the screen. And it's over there on the left, do you see it? Right. And then a juror. Bring it up just a little. It's a little blurry. Interesting that they don't even have it in focus. And the juror's asking for them to bring it up a little bit. The jurors are really having to ask them to do stuff that they should have just done on their own accord. Question by Miss Davidson. So that's account 3062. And then that's Randall Keith Bean. And then Parker's jumping in, so let's, I think we, does everybody see that first sheet? Oh, okay, where I showed them kind of prior to the fraud with this account, the kind of balances that were in this account. You'll see at the very top, this is going to keep going up. You'll see it's up about to about 12,000, it looks like to me, in that account approximately. Then a juror is jumping in. Look at that one going in and the wire in on 7-3 because he he's does a nine a 1900 deposit and his balance goes from 4400 to 10,000. That's not right. Miss Davidson says no it looks if you look at the, you know, the back, it's, he's got basically 1204, and there's a debit for 1959, and his balance, the juror says, but it goes the other way. Miss Davidson says, yeah. And the juror says, so, yeah, he's got 4400, he's got 4400 in his account. He wires 19, and now he's got 1000 $10,000? Now Parker says, no sir, 
let me look at the other. Let's, let's, these are, y'all have to, this us in the financial world, these are extremely, let's, if you'll look at the next sheet, I think you'll answer, it will answer your question. Where you can see on 7-5 there is, you'll see that there's two, and I'm not sure if these in, if these internal credits, and you're looking at all the same date on 7-5, so you see a $10,000 there in that account, all on the same day, USAA internal credit. It kind of, I'm going to show you up <clears throat> here, kind of how it because, and then Parker gets cut off by a juror. Thank you. The balance numbers don't, aren't real because they're not, they're not linear. Again, here, you look at this. I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying that these are things that hit the same day. Parker says, yes, sir. So the balance number isn't accurate because you've got the cash rewards credit. You've got the $17, you've got a balance of $12,000, and then you've got a $5,000 credit, and you've still got a balance of $5,000. Then you've got another $5,000 credit, and you've got a balance of $7,000. That's not, the balance numbers aren't good. We can, what I'm, but it sounds like, that we can trust that these, the transfers are right, but not the balance numbers. <laughs> wow. The jurors in real time are picking apart this document and they're basically saying, well, I can prove to myself that a good chunk of these numbers are wrong, but it sounds like what you're saying is we can trust the transfer numbers are right, but not the balance numbers. And then Parker still says, and again, I'm not arguing with you at all, sir, and I'm not any bank record expert or anything, just what I'm seeing on the screen. Whoa, guys, holy cow. Page 45, lines 22 through 24. This juror is totally thrashing the argument of the prosecution. And listen to this comment that gets blurted out by Parker. And again, I'm not arguing with you at all, sir, and I am not any bank record expert or anything. Just what I'm seeing on the screen. This, wow. To testify like this in in court under oath when you've got a direct question when jurors are ripping apart your testimony Wow how how is it possible that any indictment was ever issued by this jury I really wonder if that's why the indictment and these grand jury proceedings were sealed. All right, question by Ms. Davidson. And let's, you know, be clear. Not, not only have you reviewed these records, but you know, the USAA fraud investigator, who, the unnamed USAA fraud investigator, has reviewed these extensively and relayed all the information that you've previously testified about question mark so here this is this is cynthia davidson running into a burning house with a bucket of water and saying and now you know let's be clear not only have you reviewed these records but you know the usa a fraud investigator this it's like saying Oh, Superman did this, has reviewed these extensively and relayed all the information that you've previously testified about. And then look what Parker says. 
Right. I rely on it. <laughs> oh my word. Cynthia's ask another question. And so with bringing out these records, which are extremely confusing, we're only just trying to answer your question. So, and Parker says, well, so just moving up, you'll see, let's go into, wow, they are gaslighting the jury. Bank records don't have to be extremely confusing. A bank account is like a bucket. And you can put things in a bucket and you can take things out of a bucket. And when you get a few buckets together, you can draw one thing out of one bucket and put it into another. And every time you do this, there's a record of the transaction. And there's actually two entries because you're pulling it out of one account and you're putting it into another. It's got to go somewhere. And so in accounting, you talk about where did it come from, where is it going to, and how much is it? There's nothing confusing about that. And so this whole question here from line 7 through line 9 of page 46 by Cynthia Davidson is absolutely garbage. It only has one purpose, and that is to gaslight the jury. It is to take away their power. It's to make them feel dumb. It's to be up there and say, I'm an attorney. I'm a lawyer. I have more education than you, and I'm having a conversation with an FBI agent, and this stuff is extremely confusing, and we're only just trying to answer your question. This is garbage. This has no place in a courtroom here. Well, just so moving up, you'll see. Let's go into... See those right there? Again, Cynthia is the, is the one leading the charge. Right. On 7-6, transfer from CD. Can everybody see those? And a juror says yes. And then the witness, I'm guessing this is Parker, so there. And then right below it, again, this is kind of, I understand how confusing this is. No, you don't. You don't understand anything, Parker. But right below it, you'll see the transfer out of the 450 and then the 500,000, 450,000, and 50,000, also on 7-6. Does everybody see that? Uh-huh. Affirmative response. Okay, I'm going to switch us to another account. Bear with me. Uh, Miss Davidson starts to say, show account number, and then she gets cut off by Parker. I'll show you this account number, 4026. And then Cynthia, show, pull it down so they can see the account holder. And then Parker says, Randall Keith Bean. Account number 4026? Right. Can everybody see the funds credited to this account? There's a $450,000 transfer. And then a juror says, there's no, I can't, I can't read it from here. Zoom in. If you zoom in, the focus is better. Look, why are, why are jurors giving instructions to a special agent from the FBI and to Cynthia Davidson about how to better run court proceedings. How come it's not zoomed in already? How come it's not in focus? Miss Davidson's picking up. And then there is the wire out to Whitney Bank. And then a juror says, right, that means the debit and the other is a credit. That's what I was talking about, the two entries. Parker says, I'm going to show you one other thing, sir, just to, you know, you can't be sure enough. 
I agree with you and I appreciate that and thank you for it, but let me show you another document. This is I agree with you. You can't be sure enough. I agree with you and I appreciate that and thank you for it. What's some strange, strange things coming out of this man's mouth on the stand? Right, again this. So this is the wire and this is the transfer. And you'll see order, the order, and customer name as Rand, Mr. Randall Keith Bean. The beneficiary, Buddy Greg Motorhome, and the account, Whitney Bank in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the figure on there is, as you'll see, is the number I provided to the ladies and gentlemen earlier, the 4991101068. Uh, you know, between Parker Still and the court reporter here, this is, uh, I, I don't know how this gets into a transcript quite this way. Uh, jurors speaking up. See, that's what bothers me. They knew that was, excuse me, they knew that there was supposed to be 493 in there, and there wasn't. Parker says, yes, ma'am, I understand. Any other questions on bank records? I'm happy to explain them. What? Oh, Uh, let me read this again from the juror. The, a juror. A juror is saying, hey, see, that's what bothers me. They knew that there was supposed to be 493 in there, and there wasn't. And then Parker says, Yes, ma'am, I understand. Any other questions on bank records? I'm happy to explain them. And Miss Davidson says, Any other questions at all on the facts? I'm about done with this witness. Oh, wow. They just shut this juror down, said, Yes, ma'am, I understand. Do we have any other questions? Miss Davidson wants to know any other questions because I'm about done with this witness. Then Parker says, I do have one thing I just want to clarify for the grand jury. First of all, I want to put, on behalf of the Bureau, I want to thank everybody. This is a, I know this is a, takes a lot of your time and everything, and I want to thank you for, for it. Let me get my notes back out. I do have one other comment I wanted to make, and just for the benefit of the of the grand jury, you know, today I have said numerous times that Randall Bean did this, Randall Bean did that. It's obviously that I'm not sitting in front of a computer screen or I'm not watching that individual do these acts. So when I say that Mr. Bean did this, it is based on the evidence that I have with me right now. And I just wanted to reinforce that comment to the grand jury when I make those comments, Mr. Bean did this or Mr. Bean did that. That is something I am deducting from the evidence that we have. Pro you mean deducing? Deducting? And I want to provide that, some of that evidence, just a short synopsis of that to you. One is that the USAA system was not compromised, meaning that they the system, somebody didn't hack in according to USAA and pretend like they're Mr. Bean. The consistent use of the same IP address, I think of IP addresses like telephone numbers. So your computer calls another computer, it's just very similar to a telephone. Consistent use of, of the same IP address. Phone calls into USAA match the telephone number as initially provided by the member Mr. Bean. Phone biometrics are used to log in. It's my understanding, again, this is coming from USAA, that you log in on, on these apps through your phone now, and the biometrics remain consistent. 
wow, he's just throwing a whole bunch of stuff at the grand jury without having been asked a direct question on this. And he starts off by saying, hey, I said Randy did this and that, and I didn't actually see him do that. And I'm only deducting from the evidence that we have, which it's evident that he doesn't understand the evidence that he does have. If he did understand it, the jury would understand it. The jury wouldn't be asking pointed questions. And then we have these long nonsensical statements by the witness that just feel like nothing more than gaslighting. Let's grab a hold of the reins of this grand jury and while we're talking, doesn't matter what we're saying, as long as we've got the ball on our court, as long as we've got our hands on the rein and in control of this grand jury, and not letting the jury ask questions and not answering their questions, then that's where we need them to be. That's what this has the feel of, guys. So now he's saying the USAA system was, was not compromised, but wow, where's the signed document? Where's your witness statement that says this? He's saying that, hey, it was the same IP address that came every time. You don't know who's on the other side of that computer, Parker. Phone calls into USAA match the number initially provided by the member Bean. What are phone biometrics? He never explains phone biometrics. And then Ms. Ms. Giraffe described that to of Mr. Bean and the scheme worked in the video. And lastly, but most importantly, we arrested Mr. Bean in the motorhome. That was the basis for this fraudulent purpose. Arrested him on what? The, the bogus warrants? And so when I say Mr. Bean committed these acts, it is based on the evidence, on that evidence in part. So just of the benefit of the grand jury. This guy cannot talk at all. It's been an always an honor. Again, thank you for your time today. And then Ms. Davidson says, and one more big piece of evidence, which I like, it was his social security number that was the fraudulent account number minus one digit question mark. Oh, we gotta bring that up again. That's right. It's my understanding is the real one was 243, the account was 244. And then Ms. Davidson says, yes. A juror says, is Ms. Giraffe named in the indictment? Yes. And then the juror continues, as a defendant? Ms. Davidson says, yes, but I'm... The juror says, but that's not... Is that the right word, defendant? Miss Davidson says, yes. Very interesting. The juror says, when you summarized, can you summarize what the indictment, part of the indictment against her, he charges as far as she is concerned? Miss Davidson says, it charges her with solely in the money laundering account, which is the transfer of the money from USAA to Whitney Bank. And remember the testimony regarding the fact that she called Whitney Bank and Buddy Gregg and told them that to accept this money, that it was good money and that she was the attorney representing Mr. Bean and that this money was basically good money, accept it. That she didn't know if there was some sort of confusion with the Federal Reserve or, and that she was going to open an investigation. Is that, and then Parker's chiming in, she did reference opening an investigation, and it's my, my, what I deduct from my investigative experience. Uh, again, deduct? No, deduce. Come on, if this guy's been through four years of undergrad, three years of law school, JAG training, 
He served as defense and prosecuting attorney. He's an identity theft expert, and he's been a fucking judge. And he's saying, I deduct? I deduce. But here, investigative experience. This is like Superman. This is like, hmm, Fox News saying, some people say. I deduct from my investigative experience that involving an attorney in these types of transactions also kind of raises that level a little bit and generally gives people somewhat peace of mind that, you know, it is a valid transaction. The juror says, can you summarize the evidence against Mr. Bean in terms of money laundering? Yes, sir. So what we have, the evidence wise, would be the conversation that where Miss Giraffe is on there with. And then Miss Davidson has to jump in here. The recording telephone call? Yes, that's it. That is the, that is. So that's where we see, you know, where she is trying to influence. Based on my investigative experience, she is trying to influence this situation. Make this transaction go through. This money laundering transaction of this, the $493,000 $493, in order to purchase this, the motorhome. And her knowledge of, how do I say this? She has knowledge of these funds, right? Because what if, I mean, I can't see where you could say, be thinking she was just an attorney on behalf of her client trying to, even though she's not licensed in the state of Tennessee, trying to make this deal happen. But from the other video, we're able to see where she has knowledge of the CD scam. Yes, sir. The juror asks, what was the date on that phone call? The date on the, the juror says, is that not July 7th, question mark, Miss Davidson? It was either July 6th or July 7th because the transfer was made on July 7th and the money was taken on the on July 6th. Parker says, and I think that I think the actual phone call through Miss Davids the actual phone call though, Miss Davidson, I think that occurred on July again, I'm this is I'm not I'm looking at my notes, but I think it occurred on July 10th is what I remember from the posting would be that because actually when we picked the motor home up, it was at Buddy Greg. Right, we're, we're at the end of page 52 guys and we're over a half hour into this and that's about where I want to have them stop. So to sum this up, we've got the jury asking questions. We've got the jury who's basically offering instructions and guidance during the middle of this hearing to make it flow more smoothly, to make it clear. They're pointing out big holes in the records that they don't understand. And all of this is just being Angela brushed under the carpet, it appears like. If you got any light in this matter, if you got any links or love, Send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. Well, we'll be back soon with another installment of this grand jury transcript. We have just about 25 pages left to go. I love you guys. Peace out.